So let's try to add that piece of data again. Tracks. And let's try to change the coordinate system. I just turned off the screen on my uh, laptop. Let's see if this works. Okay, that was it. I guess, uh, and it, it's recording right now. So I guess it's a graphics card error. It's causing this. We'll see if it crashes again, but if I'm gonna have to work like this for the rest of the semester, which is stupid. Um, I have to move my microphone over here. Okay, so anyway, back to the point at hand here. Um, to visualize information, you go to this quantities in the symbology tab here at the quantities tab. And you can use this to basically give color ramps to pieces of information on the, on the, on the thing here. And so the thing we want to uh, visualize is total population. Before I do anything else, go back to your attribute table here and I'm just gonna minimize, uh, make this a little bit smaller so I can see it. Um, and this is a problem you're gonna run into sometimes with data is that some data that should be numbers are actually strings and you can't visualize it, you can't quantify it. So the problem with this right now and the reason you can't visualize it is total pop, these numbers here. If you right click here and you click on properties, you see that this actually is, is actually a string, which basically means it's words. It's not, it doesn't actually recognize it as a number. So what we need to do is we need to make a copy of this piece of data, um, but as a, as a numerical field, not as a string. So what we need to do is we need to add a field. Click add field here. And this is generally how you add new data tables to your uh, GIS data sets, add field. And we're gonna call this, just call it uh, pop relation. It doesn't matter what, what it's called. It sometimes matters what the name is when you're exporting things to Rhino, but in this case, since we're just staking in GIS, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna make it a long integer just to give us a bit more room. So click okay. And at the very end of this list here, you'll see you have new population uh, column here. It doesn't have any information in it. Uh, I'm gonna move it, you can just move it by dragging it over. I'll move it to the beginning of it, being on this uh, table here, so it's a bit easier to get the speed of that thing. There we go. Let's move it right next to the uh, uh, population tab. There we go, right here. Okay, so to make this column equal to this column, right click on the name here and go to field calculator. And see, now population equals, just literally uh, double click on total pop, which is the uh, column here, and click okay. And just give it a second to process, and there you go. Now you've made a new field here um, but it's not a number, it's a long integer. So now you can go into your visualization properties, quantities, the value, and you'll see you have population right here, which wasn't there before. So if you click on population, you can uh, visualize it using ramps. So the population, you know, when it's between one and 2,000, 2,000 to 3,000, on and on. And you can increase the number of classes, which is basically the number of categories, so 10 or 15. <clears throat> I usually find more classes is a much nicer graphic effect, um, but I leave it up to you. So you click OK, and now you have a population map of St. Louis. Now, is, what do you think is a problem with this map? It's not that easy to read? Yes, it's a bit confusing. Um, let me ask you a question. So blue means low population, red means high population. Do you really think like these parts of uh, East St. Louis are higher in population than say, you know, Central West End, which is one of the most dense and most populated places in St. Louis? It doesn't make any sense, even though the information is accurate. And the reason it doesn't make any sense is because it's basically visualizing the population um, on the, <coughs> sorry, I gotta get a drink of water. It's not taking into account the density of the site. 
So these parcels here are much smaller than these parcels here. Um, and because they're much smaller, obviously they have less people, but they're a lot more dense than these parcels here. So what we want to do is we want to normalize this data. And this is a, a technique that you guys should be using when you're uh, visualizing numerical information. And the way you do that is uh, you need to basically make this uh, area a ratio, uh, this population a ratio over the area of these parcels. And so what we need to have is a, a, a column in this table here that's related to the area of each parcel. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new field. I'm going to call this area. And I'll make this a, uh, a double. <clears throat> a double is basically just a very uh, precise numerical format. It's basically you get a decimal point in your, uh, in your number, as opposed to an integer which has, which has no decimal points, basically. A float also works, but a double is a bit more precise. These are very similar, just as integer, short integer and long integer are very similar. So we're going to use double, click OK. It's always going to be at the very end. And you can actually calculate uh, geometries just by right click on area, going to calculate geometry. And then you can automatically get something like area or perimeter or uh, the x coordinate of the centroids. But we want area. And then you can choose your units. And uh, it doesn't really matter. I think uh, acres makes most sense for uh, parcels or tracks. So if you just do that, you automatically get uh, the uh, area of the site in, in, in uh, acres. And actually what it, make, what it help is actually instead of calling this area, call this area underscore acres so you know the uh, units that you're working with. So then go back to your uh, symbology tab and you see in your field of population under that is a thing called normalization. You want to put the thing you just made area right there. Uh, only has five classes, let's just increase the classes to like 10. Uh, click OK. And now this map makes a lot more sense, right? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a much much more realistic visualization, visualization of the density of the city. And so yeah, East St. Louis, uh, not as dense as uh, Midtown St. Louis. Um, South City, obviously very dense. But then as you get into the suburbs, uh, yes, not many people are going to be uh, out here. So that is normalization. That's a smart way to begin to visualize data in a way that makes sense and it's not confusing to you know, people who see it. Any questions about that? OK, so uh, the next thing I want to mention while we're still looking at this uh, graphic table here is the concept of color and graphic representation. Because if you think about it, you know, we want to make these maps beautiful, not just informational. If you go to your uh, color ramp options here, you know, you got these usually these preset color ramps built in. And if I'm perfectly honest, they're all pretty bad. They're all pretty terrible. Like, none of them look really that great. Like, seriously? Um, or seriously? I mean, that one's OK. It's a bit simple. But my point here is like, I wanted to show you guys how to make your own custom color ramp so that you can actually choose what colors uh, you want to use in your in your uh, in your visualization visualizations. So if you right click on the color ramp tab here, you can get your you can uh, edit the properties of these ramps. And you see this is a ramp that's going from one color to a second color. Um, and the way I recommend making your color ramps is literally going to something like Adobe Illustrator, where Adobe has a lot of really really good. Uh, color tools. So let's just make a new document real quick. And I'm going to show you. This is just a, a technique. You don't have to use it this way, but I recommend trying it. Um, and just giving this, say, like a, a swatch. Let's say it's uh, giving it an interesting looking color, like something like that. Like that's a nice looking green, for instance. And then you can go to your color harmonies, um, and you can find colors that work well with that green. So let's say. Let's copy this down here. And let's say let's use uh, maybe one of these 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 color harmonies here. Let's choose to make that maybe this red or maybe this yellow or maybe this blue here. Maybe let's use these two colors here. Um, and 
I can't see my uh, my swatches because the screen is too small. Let me, there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the color, click on the swatch here, and I get my color numerical information here. I'm just going to have this open for a second. I'm going to copy the first line in the H line here, copy. Go back to my uh, color ramp here. And you see you can edit this color by going to clicking the color, then clicking more colors. And you got your H as a V here. So just copy and copy that guy there. Go back to your Illustrator document, copy this. Go back to your uh, arc map, copy the second line, and copy that. Copy the last line, click OK. And now you've uh, duplicated that color into this uh, environment here. And then just, just do the second color. So click on the second color here, copy. 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 Okay. And now you've made a pretty nice looking color ramp that I'd say is much better than most of the crap you see in ArcMap. And you can change the algorithm, which is kind of just determining the, the gradient from one to the other. Um, but see now that, you know, that's, it's, it's getting somewhere better. It's not perfect. But you know, I think you can. I'm just giving you an option to control your color situation. That's not one of these really terrible-looking color ramps here that you feel like I get. You got to stick with necessarily, but you can. You can be a bit more adventurous with what you're doing here. And then, what you need to do is after you make your color ramp that you like it, just right-click and save it, and just call a given name. In this call, something green to teal or something like that. Um, and that's that's that color ramp uh, tutorial there. So this is a graphic choice that you guys should think about. So how do you find data? Um, you go on the internet. <laughs> um, most United States cities have GIS data sets that are publicly available. And I'll show you strategies about how you can access that information. So let's start with uh, the city that a lot of us are already working in, which is uh, St. Louis. So. No surprise, uh, St. Louis uh, GIS, more specifically, it's St. Louis City uh, GIS. And you can do this for any city that you, you work in. And uh, I know for a fact that, uh, having done this several times, that uh, St. Louis information will be saved in uh, the planning department here. And uh, there's a little volume uh, called public data sets. Click here to view available public data sets. And uh, this is where you get things like that they allow you to look at. Sometimes uh, they won't give you everything just because they want to keep you know, certain pieces of data close to their, keep it private. Um, but I'm going to show you a trick that I think is legal um, that <laughs> you can basically hack into servers. Um, it's not really hacking because it's a, it's a feature that's built into ArcMap and people talk about it. Um, it's just a really, it, seems, it feels like a very backdoor method. So, you know, these are all shape files, and that's the format you want to find for most of your uh, data sets. Um, but let's say, uh, let's see if I can find something here. I'm trying to find a uh, land use map. So let's see, urban design. Um, I wish I had planned this. Actually, no, I know a good source. So St. Louis County, yeah, GIS. I just know this as an example. So usually, sometimes, you get things like this. These uh, live streaming maps um, that uh, are not loading. Try to refresh this. Is not showing up. Um, direct maps. Map review. Okay, so here's an example. So sometimes you 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 go on uh, different cities' public data set web uh, data set websites and you find these live maps basically, and they have every single piece of information you could ever need about the project, but you don't know how to get to it. 
Here's a secret trick about how to get this information. If you ever have a live map like this, and you, I, I'd say it works about 70% of the time. Uh, Chrome, Google Chrome, uh, most website, uh, most browsers have this uh, thing called developer tools here. So if you have the network tab open here, and then you just refresh this, you know, just do something to that, you'll see you'll get uh, data sources uh, pop through. And this, we need to find a specific kind of data, so let's just, I'm gonna refresh this page. Refreshing usually helps bring it up the data. Okay, so let's bring that thing up again. And this is what we're looking for. What we're looking for is something known as a service. And so usually when you look at these URLs, you see it has blah, 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 ArcGIS, score, rest, services. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for that, those magic words, rest, services. Um, and I'm gonna look for the one that's specific to St. Louis. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, there we go, right there. So you see this? STOGIS.STLOUIS, MGOV, ArcGIS, REST Services. This is the URL you want to copy. So I'm gonna copy that link address. Again, this is like, I don't know how legal this is, but it works. Um, and, uh, Create a text document, copy what you just, or paste what you just copied, and you only want to keep everything up to REST services. So copy that, and go back to GIS. So, in GIS there's something known as the ARC catalog, which you can get to uh, by uh, clicking this little button here, this yellow little button called ARC catalog. And you can connect to a GIS server in this little folder here called add GIS server. So I actually I've already, I think I've already connected to this, so I'm just gonna de disconnect from it for now. Uh, delete. And uh, I will just double click on add ArcGIS server. Just click next, use GIS services, next. And you see the server URL. Just copy what you just pasted in there like that. Click finish. Let's wait. And this is, uh, I don't know how I figured this out, trial and error of many, many uh, just trying to find data from different sources and this magically worked for some reason. And so I'm passing this piece of this trickery to you so if you need to do some data mining, that's one way to do it. And so it, what happened is now this little thing came up in my uh, art catalog here and if I expand it, um, you see you have different sources of information that you can use. Base, com, fire, forestry, streets, water, Public data sets, Arial 2012, uh, SLP, snow routes, utilities. So these don't really make any sense. So you're just gonna have to go through one by one and see what they are. But for starters, like the Arial, you can, all you do is drag it into your uh, 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 document here and voila, you've uh, got an Arial of St. Louis um, for free. And usually these are pretty good quality. Uh, images. I'm um, sorry, I'm going to pin this to the side so you can see more of the information. So Arial is one piece of information. Let's turn that off. Um, now the thing I recommend you guys look for when you see these data sets is a little square thing here. You see all these all look like little computer monitors, um, but one of these computer monitors has a little white square in front of it. That means this data is exportable. You can take that data and you can export it and save it to your computer. Um, and then you can export the vectors and bring it to Rhino or whatever you want to do later. So this is like basically free information. Everything else is a bit tougher to use. You can't really export them into Illustrator, um, but they're still useful um, as their own thing. But let's say, you know, let's take this streets thing here and just drag it into uh, our, our uh, thing here. And let's see what kind of information we just found about St. Louis City. So all these lights things here, but oh, historic lights, parking meters, traffic lights, street inspections, snow routes, uh, all these pretty pretty interesting things. Uh, maybe parking meters is an interesting piece of data you wanna use for your, one of your projects. Um, again, because this piece of information has a little square in the little corner here, that means you can export this information. So parking meters, if you wanna take the information and save it to your computer, you just right click it, and you just go to data, 
and then export data. And then we'll just save all features using a source data and just save it somewhere in your computer. And I'll just call this, uh, just sort of this thing to do its thing. I would not recommend this method as your primary way of finding information. It's not honestly not the best way of doing it, but it's a way that is not well, really well known out there. The best way, again, is just to you know, do your Google research and find information um, that way. And this is taking a while, so I'll, I'll just let it do its thing for a second. Just... OK, so it came back. And so make sure your uh, file type is shapefile. That's the one you want to use. Click Save. Click OK. Do you want to add the exported data to your map as a layer? Click Yes. And uh, now you have that data in your data set as a new shapefile layer that you can visualize. Uh, you can view the attribute table for and find uh, anything you want to know about this, these uh, parking meters. So these are TR limit parking meters. You, can, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> it's model, model 80. <laughs> I don't know how you use model 2000. That's the that's the parking meter you want to use because way it's uh, 1,920 uh, years better than 80. Okay. All right. So uh, any questions in general? Um, okay. So uh, there is one uh, data source that. Um, I highly recommend you guys all use to find your initial information, and that's this site here called uh, Geofabric. Uh, Download.geofabric.de. And this is actually OpenStreetMap data. So it's free, it's, it's completely open to you. And the beauty of this, it's worldwide data. So anywhere in the world, you can get data for this. So it doesn't matter if you're in America or South America or uh, Europe or anywhere. This is how you find information for most major cities. It's good for major uh, metropolises. Small cities are going to have a bit tougher time for that. But you know, here you can see Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, anywhere in the world you can find information for. So <clears throat> let's say uh, uh, Japan or something. Uh, go to Asia and uh, let's find Japan. Uh, what you want to download is the this file here, the Japan latest .shp.zip. SHP is what you want, the shape file here. It's 1.2 gigabytes, so I'm not going to download it. And, um, well, let's see how fast it takes. Two hours, one hour, two hours, one hour. Yeah, cancel. Um, but I'll show you. I think I have some information from things I've downloaded in the past. Um, okay, so for instance, St. Louis, uh, since I have a lot of information, this is what I downloaded from that website, MissouriLatest.shp, and this is the information you'll always get from that source, is buildings, land use, natural places, points, railways, roads, um, waterways. So let's do something like natural and see what we get. So this is Missouri, and uh, it's basically, you know, marking all the natural features in the site, and you can obviously again look at the. Uh, it's running slow on me today. Look at the attribute table, and you can see what kind of feature it's uh, demarking, whether it's water, riverbank, uh, forest. I'm gonna close this real quick, and then you can obviously uh, visualize it using the. Quantities or categories? Uh, quantity, categories, when you're just doing land use, is what makes most sense. So type and all values. Um, and you can change the colors manually just by clicking on the symbol here. So forest should be green. Park should probably be a, a light green. Riverbank should be blue. And water is water. Just click OK. And uh, you'll see this is St. Louis here, but then all the other areas you know, have their correct colors. So, uh, the point here is this resource that I'm showing you guys, uh, Geofabric, is a good site for basically base information for anywhere in the world. So I recommend when you're doing your first pass at finding information, this is the first site you go to and get your base data, and then you find more specific uh, information later from more specific websites. The problem with this data here is it's very general. It's very, 
it, it's very broad. So for instance, like things like roads won't have any thickness. It'll just be the center line for the roads, which is okay, but you know, you want to have road widths in your GIS models, uh, ideally. Now, road center lines are good for specific things like network analysts, and I'll show that in a, probably next week. Um, but for now, this is a good resource for that kind of thing. Okay, so the next part, I'm gonna show you how to basically take a project from start to finish uh, using some kind of framework or some kind of lens that you're examining a project with. And so here's my uh, story for you guys. Uh, and this is actually a real story. I'm not making this up. Uh, one of my good friends uh, who works at Canon Design um, in Chicago, he is actually uh, thinking about applying to grad school because uh, he only has a bachelor's degree. He's thinking about getting his master's degree. And he wants to look for the best architecture schools in the United States to apply to. And so what I'm going to do for him is I'm going to make a map for him of all the best, best architecture schools in the United States and visualize it in terms of its ranking so that the best schools are a bit more prominent and the lesser schools are a bit less prominent. And then I'm going to overlay that on top of census data in relation to uh, graduating students uh, used 25 to 29. So it's a combination of census data, it's a combination of educational data, and I'm going to show you how to make data from this. And just as a, as a kind of a lesson here, you know, it, the, whatever you map for this course, it has to be something interesting to you personally. And so something like this is interesting to me personally, and that's why it, it's easy to work on an assignment like this. So the first thing we need to do is you need to get basic census data. And uh, in this folder here, uh, census URLs, uh, I give you two sources of census data right here. The first is your tiger line data right here. So let's copy that link and go to Google Chrome. And let's close some of these tabs here and open this guy. Uh, this is basically uh, shape files that are related to census. So tract information, uh, county line information. This is where you get that information from. I'm just showing you this link here to know, to, so you guys know where to download it from. Um, and what you want to download is the uh, these 2015 tiger line shape files, uh, FTP site here. If you click that, it'll take you to a download FTP site. You have all these all these links here for things like parcels, uh, coastlines, etc. Uh, what I downloaded was uh, county boundaries, and this is what I already downloaded. That was that zip file that I asked you guys to unzip. So I'm not going to download it because I already did. Um, so after you unzip that file, um, it's right here. Let's add that file into our ArcMap uh, document. So uh, click the plus button here. Uh, go to wherever you saved it in. So in this case, I saved it in, uh, let's see, up one level, Dropbox. Actually, uh, okay, so I'll show you how to add, uh, add a folder. I don't have that folder connected here. So click, click, click connect to folder. And I'm going to connect to my Dropbox. Dropbox, click OK. And now Dropbox is uh, available to me, and I saved it in my uh, Packages week two, uh, TL 2015 U.S. County. This is what we downloaded, and there's your shape file. Click add. So zoom into this map here, and these are basically the county bound county boundaries uh, for the entire United States. Again, first thing whenever you set up a new document is to make the coordinate system make sense. So you know this coordinate system, it's 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 kind of a square coordinate system. Alaska is huge; it doesn't quite work. Uh, for North America, I recommend uh, searching for, uh, well, actually, you can just find it here. Um, go to uh, Geographic Coordinate Systems. Go to uh, North America, and um, actually, I think it's projected. No, I'm just going to search. Just search for North America. Go to Geographic. There's one specific coordinate system that I want to use. Let's see if I can find it. Um, okay, I think it's, yeah, NAD 83 Continuous USA Albers. This guy here. Click OK. Um, this is a bit, a bit of a more traditional look at the United States. Now everything is a bit less distorted. Uh, this is a much nicer uh, projection. Um, now, one little uh, thing I want you guys to do uh, whenever you make data like this is to 
set what's known as a clipping uh, boundary. And so, for instance, like right now, you know, I know most architecture grad schools are located in the mainland United States, but not in Alaska. So we don't really need Kauai or Alaska or these islands here. So what we can do is we can create a clipping bound to basically make it so that these areas here don't render uh, in, on, uh, in ArcMap, and it actually helps speed up the overall um, uh, ArcMap file. So the way we do that is uh, up here, there should be a drawing tab. If you don't see it, just go to Windows uh, or Customize Toolbars and Draw right here like that. And then you want to click on the rectangle button here. You can also do a regular any shape, but a rectangle for a clipping plane works fine. And we're just going to draw a rectangle around this site, in this case the United States. And after you've drawn that rectangle, you want to click on Drawing, Convert Graphics to Features. And all that means is it's going to take this, what's essentially a sketch. This is just a dumb rectangle that doesn't mean anything. We're going to take the sketch and we're going to turn it into a shape file uh, that you can use for uh, geoprocessing. Um, so convert the polygon graphics to only select the graphics only. Um, and then pick a location for this. And I'll just save it here. I'll call this uh, USA B box for bounding box. And I check this box here, automatically delete graphics after conversion just so it deletes the uh, original sketch. And now you have a new layer in your table of contents that's referred to this box here. Uh, I'm just gonna turn the fill color to no color and make the outline uh, red so you can easily see what's going on here. That was a red box around the uh, United States. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, go to our table of contents, double click layers, and what you wanna do is go to uh, the data frame tab here. And down here there's a little thing called clip options. No clipping. I want you to clip it to shape, specify shape, outline the features, USA B box we just made. Click OK, click OK, and uh, you're done. And now if I zoom out, you see that it doesn't render anything like Alaska or anything like that. It doesn't delete the data, it just hides it. It's kind of like a mask, basically. But it helps a lot for uh, speeding up your document speed because it doesn't have to uh, render those objects in the space. I think you just like turn off the box here. It's still there, but it, it just doesn't, it just won't be it. Okay, so now we got these county lines here. Let's start doing stuff with it. If you right click this and open attribute table, uh, you see what you get here. Uh, you get information like the, uh, the county GOID, its name, its, its, uh, uh, its uh, class, its state. You know, but you know, what we want is actual, actual census data for this stuff, it doesn't have that linked into this shape file. So what we need to do is we need to add it to this table here. And uh, that's going to the concept of joins and relates, a very uh, useful tool in GIS that allows you to visualize information, uh, large swaths of data very quickly. So uh, in the uh, census URL uh, document I gave you, there's a link here, I'm gonna need the first one, uh, copy that guy, uh, go to your browser, copy that. And uh, this is where you get your county data files. So information for all these specific types of data sets, banking, building permits, business, crime, education, employment, federal government, all these pieces of information you can get and it's all gonna be uh, join, joinable to the county data set we, we uh, just made earlier. So all this data here is census data basically and you can download it via XLS uh, Excel file. And so what I downloaded previously is these two education Excel files right here, uh, edu01xls. And if you go to the uh, folder that uh, uh, I get I'll let you guys unzip. There are those two here. That's basically what you can get when you download from those two um, files there. So let's open one up and see what stuff is in it. So you get the county. That's the first line here, county. And then you get all these statistics, numbers and things. And these are all useful things, but you don't know what they mean. It's, it's written in kind of like this code here that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, another thing I downloaded was something called Mast Data, and you can also get this from the same website that you download the shapefile from. And this is just basically a key that'll tell you what 
uh, each of these codes actually means. And so since I'm in the education uh, data set here, all these are labeled EDU. So let's go and just scroll down to the uh, EDU side of this thing. So EDU. And you can see these are all your categories of information. So school enrollment, persons three years and over enrolled in elementary schools, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I was interested in was uh, this guy here. Educational attainment, persons 25 years old, 25 years old or a uh, graduate or professional degree uh, from 2005 to 2009. So this is uh, just information that I can help my friend saying like these are parts of the world where people are graduating from college um, or grad school uh, more than other places. And that's this code right here, edu 69520 d So we need to find this line of data in our Excel sheet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, copy, just that line there and go back to this first model here and you see you got all these sheets. This is a lot of information. You are basically, you are swimming in information, but you need to find that one uh, piece of information. So uh, to find information in Excel, you go to find and select, find, and find, just copy and just paste that uh, thing you just uh, copied and just find next. Like, so Excel so cannot find the data you're searching for, so uh, it's not in this one, edu1. So close that, let's open edu2. Because there are two, there are two uh, Excel files. So the second one, find, select, find. Okay, I already copied in there, find next. Uh, it might not even be in the correct sheet, so let's just go to another sheet, find next. Let's go to next sheet, find next. Let's go to another sheet, find next. Let's go to another sheet. It's in here, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I know where it is. Find next. Um, okay. EDU 69520, let's see, 69E, F. Oh, I see what I did, sorry. Uh, actually, uh, what I did was I already found it previously and then I just, um, I changed the uh, name here to the, uh, Name where I just replaced that text here. So I was there, I just, well, I'm finding it. I already did this previously. Anyway, that's how you find the information. So um, it was this column here, basically. And I just changed the, uh, the uh, name of the column just so it's easier for me to remember what it was. Remember what sheet it was named on? EDU02F. Okay, so let's go back to ArcMap and I'll show you how to join this information to your uh, county data set here. So let's go to Right-click this guy here in his little uh, tab called Joins and Relates. And you want to hit Join. And you want to join attributes from a table. So choose the field in this layer that the join, the join would be based on. So before I go back, I'll just go open the attribute table again. You need to find a piece of data in this data set that's the same as the data in your Excel sheet. And you can use that to match data, basically. And so I already did this previously. I know GeoID here is the same as uh, this number here. I just, I, I just, you just, you just kind of like intuitively, intuitively know that. So we want to join GOID with the column STCOU. So let's remember that. Go to joins and relates. Join. Choose the field this layer will be the join be based on. Choose GOID. This is the field in your shapefile. Choose the table to join this layer or load the table from a disk. So you want to load that table from an outside source. It is an EDU2. And remember, it was in the, this uh, sheet here. If you don't remember, just go back to it and just see. Yeah, it's an EDU02F. So click that, add. Now choose the field that it's going to be based off, which is this. And then keep all records. I, re I recommend just keeping all records. It, it just keeps everything that's there and click OK. I'm just give it a second to do that. And now this is the gold, gold aspect of GS that you are going to just die over. It's just all this information now, educational attainment, persons 
point of over, is now at your fingertips. All, this, all these numbers here. That's pretty cool, right? Okay. I wish I was more enthusiasm. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, think about it. This is amazing. This is basically all, the, all your infographics you ever saw on the news um, all the world. This is how they did it. This is how you do it. This is how you get information and you spatialize it. So numbers here. We want to visualize this in this map. So um, if you guys remember, we want to make sure that the information is normalized. So we need to have a uh, area uh, attribute table. So let's see if this thing has area. Sometimes they already have area built into the uh, thing. And it does. Uh, a land is basically area of land. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here that would work. A land should work fine, actually. So we just use that. So double click, quantities, the value, this thing we just changed. And we're going to give it like maybe 20 classes. Let's give it an interesting color ramp just so it makes sense. So uh, areas with high graduation uh, levels are going to be in green. And areas that are not are going to be red. Let's click apply. Um, and there you go. So now you have an interesting map of the United States. Obviously, East Coast where Yale and Boston and Columbia, high graduation rates there. West Coast, UC Berkeley, uh, UCLA, areas in high graduation rates there, some of the big college in Texas, um, St. Louis, right here, that, that's, that's where you're, this is your graduation uh, statistic right there. Um, okay, so let's, actually let's norm, <coughs> now we're gonna normalize this data, um, see if it makes a bit more sense after we do that, so normalization A land, let's give it 20 classes. I'm actually going to change this ramp to something different. Let's try, um, uh, let's try this guy, I guess. Okay, so red, red's a good indicator of heat apply. So there you go. This one makes a little bit more sense again. So areas that originally were kind of yellow, high graduation rates doesn't make quite much sense, but now this makes a lot more sense. So that's, that's pretty powerful. Now you kind of get a picture, especially these are where students are graduating from in the United States. So now we have our base to work with here. Actually, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to get rid of these. Uh, if you look, zoom in closely, I'm, I'm just thinking about graphics. graphics. You guys see these little lines around the, uh, the, uh, the county lines. I'm going to get rid of that just so it's a bit more of a spatial uh, look. So just go back to your table of contents, double click. Click any, anywhere, right click, uh, properties for all symbols. And just get rid of the outline color, so it's no color. Okay. Uh, well, that's that's a, lot more, not a lot nicer looking. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to save this, just so I, if it crashes, I can get back to it. So, that's cool. Okay. Okay, so, next step. Now we have our map of uh, graduation rates. Now we want to find the best architecture schools in the United States. Where do you find that? You use to go to the design intelligence rankings that come out every single year and everyone reads them and you compare where their school is listed amongst everything else. So just to feel good about themselves, ego, ego, egotistical trips or whatever. Um, I happen to have that downloaded um, in my uh, design intelligence right here. The most recent rankings right here. So let's go down to the architecture rankings and you can see where WashU is. Compared to everywhere else, let's see if we can get to that. Oh, here we go. Top 20 programs in 2015. So, WashU is right here at number 10. Behind, tied with UC Berkeley, uh, just behind UVA, University of Pennsylvania, Rice, Michigan, Cornell, MIT, and then you get to the you know the old players: Harvard, Columbia, Yale. So my friend who's uh, looking for grad school is he's going to apply to some, something in this list here, obviously, because he wants to go to the best school possible. So what I want to do for him is I want to take this list of colleges and I want to locate them on the map. So there are a few ways you can do this. You know, typically all you do is you go to Google Earth and you, you know, find this, uh, this school and you find a location for it. Um, what I recommend doing is, uh, yeah, go to Google Earth. This is the best way to do it, in my opinion. <clears throat> So open Google Earth, and I'll show you how to basically export location data from Google Earth, and then bring it to GIS. So 
what I'm going to do first is actually, before I do anything else, I need to get a list of schools. And architecture schools in the US. And uh, let's see, there's a Wikipedia article right here, architecture school in the United States. And there's a whole list of schools right here, Auburn, Tuskegee, uh, Cal Polytech. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. You're watching closely. Copy. Control C. Create a new Excel file. Paste. So now you've created a table of school names here. This is this is a table that you can use to bring into GIS later down the road. You've already you've already made yourself a nice table. Let's uh, clean up the formatting a bit. Um, let's see if do a, where is my formatting options. Um, can't find my formatting. Normal. Then just uh, format auto fit uh, column width so that everything's nice and legible. Okay, great. Now you have a nice list of schools here. Now you need to find, take all these schools and you need to find them in Google Earth. And this is where you basically put your headphones on, listen or watch some Netflix movie and you just go at it, go on Google Earth and you start uh, typing out these schools. And so, you know, just Auburn University, for instance, start that. Auburn University. Just start with that. You get a location. That's all you need is the location of the school. What you need to do is you need to basically uh, create a folder in your uh, places thing. Uh, add a folder. Let's call this uh, architecture. Oops. Schools. Click OK. You have a uh, architecture schools folder here. And then all you need to do is when you have your uh, search result, uh, just copy that search result using this button here and then uh, paste it into your uh, folder here. And just keep doing this. So let's do, say, Washington University in St. Louis. Okay. Again, there is, uh, as far as I know, there is, unless you can find a GIS uh, data set with all the architecture schools university, this is how you basically make information. So it, honestly, it's not that bad. Just, again, put your headphones on and just work at it for 30 minutes, and you'll get it done in no time. So copy and then paste in there. So then all you do is you're basically creating, uh, essentially, a, a database of schools and their location. So for the sake of time, I already did this for you guys. Um, but before I do it, I'll just show you how to export the information. So after you create your folder uh, with all your schools in there, I only have two in there right now, but I'll just show you what you got to do. So right click your folder and then save place as. I'm going to save it as a KML file. I'll just save my desktop for now. Architecture Schools is fine, save. And uh, then on your desktop you have Architecture Schools as KML file. So what I did uh, already for you guys, just for the sake of this demo, is uh, in your um, folder here I made a KML file called Schools. And that was basically all the top 20 schools or of uh, architecture schools in, in, uh, in the United States. As you can, I did it at 653 AM in the morning today, just for you guys. <laughs> so how do you bring this information into GIS? I'll show you. Uh, go to your GIS map. What you need to do is you need to go into what's known as the Arc Toolbox. And we will use this thing a lot in the semester. I'll show you a lot of things you can do with it. Um, this is basically your, literally your toolbox of this, these are your powers. These are all the things you can do in ArcMap that make to really take advantage of the capabilities of this program. Uh, there's like a million tools. I know maybe about 10% of these tools. Um, and so about, we'll talk more about these uh, in the coming weeks. There's some really cool tools in here, um, especially related to like CAD, uh, uh, sorry, contour information that you can uh, gather from these uh, raster surface uh, functions here. But what we want to do is we want to go to these conversion tools I'm um, sorry, uh, data management, I believe it is. Um, actually, it is conversion. 
yeah, it's, sorry, uh, conversion tools uh, from KML, KML to layer, literally KML to layer. Double click there, and you have this little uh, dialog window here that tells you how to do your thing. All you need is to you input your KML, pick a location, and then click go. So. Um, no, there's this architecture school. I'll just do this one just because I made it. And it's going to have only two pieces of information, but we'll just show what it looks like. Um, output location, you want to pick a folder that you're going to save it in. So let's just pick uh, packages, I guess. Architecture schools. Just click OK. Just give it a second. Just thinking about it. Okay, it's done now. Wash U and Auburn University. To do schools that I did recently. I'm gonna remove that. We're gonna do it again, but we're gonna do it with the uh, the uh, the KML file that I did for you guys earlier, which is in packages to schools. Uh, that's fine. I'll just save it there. Schools. Click OK. OK, so I did this for you guys. See, I spent all this time to get your architecture schools for you, so you should thank me. Um, you should thank me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, but then you can see here, um, you know, you have these information. The only thing we really need is points because uh, this is just location data. You can look at this information. You can open the open the attribute table here. You can see the in fact you got uh, all these school names here, it's location. Um, this is all stuff that came from uh, Google Earth. Most of this information is not important. For instance, like you can look at this. So you you look at this data set here, and you think there's some information that's important, some information that's not important. Um, something like this symbol ID. There's nothing. It's just a bunch of zeros. Is that really important? No. So just Delete that field. Yes, it can be undone, so be careful when you do this. But I know for a fact that's not important. This guy here, just a bunch of negative ones, doesn't mean anything. Just delete that field. Clean up your uh, just is a way to clean up your uh, your data base. It's not important. Um, this might be important. These are location addresses. Uh, this is stupid. Delete that. Okay, so now you have a nice, uh, uh, nicely managed. Uh, Table. And what I recommend doing uh, usually when you do this is when you import stuff from Google Earth is to re export this again uh, as its own shape file. So the way you do it again is just right click on points, export data, uh, make sure you click all features, the layer source data or the data frame. I recommend clicking the data frame. That just matches the original coordinate system that you have already in the, in the, the Mac document. <clears throat> And I'll just call this um, arc schools. That shape. Yes. So now you have a nice clean. Uh, remove your import. Now you have a nice clean uh, shape file with all the locations of your architecture schools. And you see what's interesting. Uh, you know the locations of the schools actually matches up pretty well with the graduating rates. So you have a you have an interesting map going on here. Now, we want to uh, connect that with the architecture school rankings, which is the fun part. So uh, all you need to do now is basically go to this document here. Um, let's say we add a new table, insert. Uh, hang on, insert new table. Let's call this like ranking or something. And this is just, again, put your headphones on and have fun with it. Um, you can just go through this whole list and you basically need to add the rankings for these schools. And because for the sake of your demo, I already did it for you in <laughs> schools right here. I added the grad and undergrad rankings for these schools here. I just, I just looked at the, this document here and I just copied them over. There's, there's, that's all that I gotta do. So, but now you have a Excel sheet with this information and now we're gonna use the joins tool 
to bring this information into uh, ArcMap. So back to ArcMap. These dots here, right click Arc Schools, joins and relates, and join. Choose the field this layer will be, the join will be based on. We want to use the name of the school because the name of the school will match the name of the table. Um, choose the, the, the table that, to join this layer. Let's uh, find it. It's in packages. Uh, Schools.xlsx. It only has one sheet, so click add. And the field will be the, I believe it's universally. Let me just double check it again. Uh, let's see if I can't remember. Yeah, university. So you want to use the university. Keep all records. Click OK. It should be done by now. So now if you look at this table here, you can see we have the grad school ranking and the undergrad ranking. And then schools that are unranked are just null. So now uh, we can use this to visualize information. So let's do uh, right click. Let's just do a simple circle, for instance. And I'll just show you what this means. Uh, quantities, value, grad, um, and uh, oh, sorry, you need to do graduated symbols or proportional symbols. Let's do proportional symbols. These are colors. It doesn't mean anything. You want to do actual size of shapes. So again, grad. Um, proportional basically means you pick a minimum value and then it proportionally increases based off of the, uh, the step sizes. So. Um, actually, this is not the best one. Actually, graduate symbols might be better. So, grad. So, one through four, small, 16 through 20 is big. That doesn't make any sense because bigger schools need to be have a bigger circle. So, actually, we're going to reverse the logic here and do 50 to 10. So, now if I click OK, uh, you'll see that, <laughs> in fact, <laughs> Harvard and Columbia and Yale and all those schools out there are bigger than other places here. And so now uh, I give this to my friend, basically, and he kind of has a picture of what's going on in the United States. Where should you go for your architecture school? Uh, looking at this map here, obviously, you're better off going somewhere here. But as we all know, we're smart, and we stayed in the Midwest, where there's a nice, really good school called Washington University in St. Louis, um, the best school in the Midwest. So. In a nutshell, that's kind of, uh, kind of what I want to show you guys. Now, obviously, this is a very rough representation here. You want to like clean up the, the look of this. Maybe, let's say, properties for all symbols. Let's get rid of the uh, interior color. Uh, let's see how it looks. Apply. Maybe something like this is better. Um, so you get, I can still see the uh, graduation rates in the area here. Uh, but now all you need to do is export this to uh, Illustrator um, and do your graphic adjustments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one thing you got to do whenever you export, again, I think I showed this last week, is to add a, add a, add a key and, or add a, a legend. And the way you do that is insert legend. Um, all the layers that you have already uh, represented here are going to be uh, popping the legend. Let's just click Next. Next, 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 finish. Um, it's going to basically, first off, it's going to uh, show you the uh, educational uh, graduation rate. If this is, these numbers don't make any sense. You're going to have to basically um, uh, change the living. But basically, all you need to do is to say, like, gr blue, low graduation rate, red, high graduation rate. Uh, make it so these numbers make sense. And then these circles probably don't make any sense either, but you're going to need to say ranking. So bigger circle is ranking one through four, that kind of thing. So you can pose your map this way.